outside of your existing portfolio. Treatments are without a doubt the most important thing on the path to winning a job for a director. My name's Scott, a director and sometimes cinematographer based out of London, England. And I started this year thinking my treatments could be better. So I've spent time talking to bigger and better directors than myself, asking them how they approach writing treatments. First up, a channel favorite, a good friend of mine, an incredibly talented commercial director, Tom Brown, tells us why treatments are so important. The thing is, is like this deck is the first thing that a agency and then a client sees that is sort of their insurance that you're going to safeguard their brand. And if you're basically giving them back exactly what they wanted with nicer images that move and you've got a cohesive sense of what you're trying to achieve, they're going to be able to say, do you know what? This really feels right. This really feels like us. And if you haven't done that or you haven't had time to do that, then it's much easier for them to kind of dismiss you and be like, do you know what? I think maybe that other guy did it. Like, because you're always in competition, aren't you? Yeah. At worst, it's you versus 10 directors. At best, it's you versus two other directors. It's a fight. You're really trying to get in there and leave as good an impression as possible. And sometimes it doesn't work because they just want another director because they're more famous or higher profile. But I think to give yourself the best chance, yeah, you have to kind of like go pretty hard on treatments. Treatments can differ depending on the type of job that you're pitching for. Narrative work, music videos and commercials all have different expectations and levels of details that are needed. This is a much bigger topic than any one YouTube video. So for now, we're just going to focus on commercial treatments because that's where I'm spending most of my time these days and that's where I can always do to improve. There's no set one way to approach them and you'll see in this video just how different directors with different styles approach jobs in different ways. Fellow director and YouTube educator Ner Niaz has created beautiful work for huge brands like Samsung and Coca-Cola from an outrageously early age because of just how quickly and proficiently he has grasped his approach to treatment writing. I try to think of it like as if I was speaking to a real person. If he was going to tell me that out loud, how would I respond to that in like the shortest form possible, like in five minutes or so. And then I try and record that on, with my voice memos on my phone. And it takes me like a day to spit it out and make a Google Doc. And inside that Google Doc, I have all of my key points that I want to talk about. I basically reiterate what they were telling me in the first paragraph. And then I start going through my regular structure. I start with the intro and then approach. I talk a little bit about characters. I break it down into casting, like how would I approach my casting? And that then seamlessly transitions into all elements of visual inside my commercial. The way I start a writing a treatment is I will open up a slides document because I find it easier to think of things in terms of the pages they're going to be in the treatment. And so I will always start with an intro and do a very, very short synopsis of the idea and say, hey, really like this idea. This is what I'd like to do with it and basically explain how the ad's going to go elevator pitch style. Then I'll move on and do what I could call a full script breakdown. So I will take every beat of the action and basically like describe it in as much detail as possible. And each beat will get an entire page in the treatment. And I find when I do that, it allows the client slash agency slash whoever's reading it to be able to kind of visualize it easier. Because I think sometimes you like, you know, when you're just describing things to people, they go, yeah, yeah, oh, it sounds really cool. And then you get off the call and they go, I have no idea what he was talking about. I also caught up with talented music video and commercial director Ebenezer Blanche, who I had the pleasure of working alongside on a campaign earlier this year. Ebs likes to test the waters on the briefing call to help him get ahead. When the pitch comes in, I'll read what they're trying to do. And if it sparks any ideas, I'll articulate those ideas on the call and see if they like it. When they don't, at least I know, okay, they don't like that. I've got to take it in a different direction. So it's more of a part of like just testing the water and seeing what kind of direction they want to go into. And obviously being on a call with them the first time, it's your chance to do that, you know? So I think that kind of gives you a competitive edge. I think one of the most important things like that you can do to yourself before even starting to uh, write your first sentences or words. I think it's recording the briefing call. Some people don't even get the chance to attend the briefing call. Like they, they only get the brief, the PDF, the little PDF, and they read that, and that's it. That's all the information they get. But I think, like, I always insist on having a call with the agency because, like, during that call, you can get a lot of extra information. Like, you can hear the subtext, you can hear the things that are 
not spoken about, that will help you a lot during the writing process. Other than trying to get across your ideas and approach, the main purpose of writing a treatment from your point of view is to win the job. You need to try and stand out from the competition. Do you talk yourself up in the treatment? For me, that's the intro page. And I try and make it not really obvious, but but I try to get my personality across the first page and, and I try my best to describe why I can relate to this brief, why I can relate to the idea being stated. Yeah, I think it's important, you know, because I think that's what makes it you. That's what makes it authentic to me anyway. I think that's what gives my edge, my advantage on winning the job, you know. Um, I think I've lived quite a diverse life in different countries. So I'm quite multicultural and always try to bring that element to my work, you know. If the creative is a, a story about a, a young dude who is coming back from a party, I try and write at least like three or four sentences about how I had the similar situation in my life and how I felt, for instance, being safe inside that Uber seeing the rating, seeing the, the the positive reviews and stuff like that. And that's why I am the human. I am the one to direct this because I know what it feels like and what the audience has to see when they watch the commercial. From the briefing call, you gauge how much this creative means to them. And then you kind of, gotta, even if you don't feel it, you've got to find a way to insert yourself to make it sound like you do. Absolutely. Yeah, that's true. I've said it before and I'm saying it again. Imagery is so important when trying to bring your ideas to life on the page. I spoke about a bunch of different imagery sources in a previous video here, which you should definitely watch next. But if you're looking for a quick and easy resource for commercial work, you should head to Frameset and use the code Scott Peters at checkout for 10% off your subscription. I'll leave a link in the description below. If you've previously built up a strong enough body of work and managed to get yourself on the roster of one of the big dogs like Ebbs, a director repped by a large global production company with a pool of resources who really want him to win that job so in turn they win the work he can get a helping hand we've got a whole team you know i'm signed a smuggler and they help a lot of my treatments as well i start off with my ideas and my text and then i get like an image researcher that pulls images for me and i just pick out of that and I, sometimes i also add my own images that i find really cool but yeah, man, obviously, I think that's the perks of being signed to a very big production company. It's, it's been great, man, so I don't have to like do everything myself. You don't have to be signed to one of the big dogs to get this sort of helping hand, but you will need money. There are companies online that offer their services to both write and do the image research for you. Image researcher, you haven't won the job at this point, so you're paying someone help you with your treatment if gambling obviously you take a calculated risk and you think do i have a good chance of being able to get this job have i had a good first call with the creatives and the agency does it feel like you know we're on a like we're on a kind of like good road to maybe having a chance of getting it like you know if you have a first call you probably wouldn't hire an imagery search you probably do it yourself uh whereas if you think oh look i've had a really good first call i think i'm gonna hire an imagery researcher and really try and nail this treatment so that we can get the job I think all of your expenditure needs to be calculated against the percentage chance of you getting the job, which sounds very clinical, but it kind of has to be. Otherwise, you know, you're going to run out of money really quickly. Who are people hiring other people to write a treatment? Surely that's the whole point about being a director is... I've definitely used treatment writers in the past, um, but what I normally do is it generally for jobs where I don't have time to write the treatments. I really prefer doing everything by myself because I really like having that control. Authentically me, start to finish. But uh, sometimes I'm pressed for time and like there's there's no other way. And productions, they offer help with this sometimes, but sometimes they don't. And so I reach out to my own ghostwriters. Once I have my briefing call recorded, I send that immediately so she or he can have a listen and get a sense of what the clients want. So I'll do the same thing I do normally and I'll go through every page and I'll put out the page and I'll just basically bullet point what I want said on the pages. I normally write a very short description of what my approach and my idea is and then we jump on a call and then I explain everything and then he or she like bounces back the ideas and sometimes they have really really nice references really nice short films or films in mind that they can reference me back to then he or she starts writing and 
I provide my structure, my treatment structure. That's what they follow and they make me a Google Doc. And then I review, I rewrite some of the parts. The text is the part that I really hate the most because I know that I have ideas, but articulating them is is a real challenge for me. The only thing I found in treatment writers is, is I have like a favorite guy who I go back to all the time who I work with a lot. But I find when I work with other people, I tend to then rewrite what they've written. So it actually costs me more time in the end. So I've started now to kind of really sort of not do that anymore. And I tend to just try and write them myself because it's quicker in the end. Then after that's done, I send that text to the visual researcher slash designer. And typically it's the same person. She or he starts looking for images. There's usually a Google Drive folder where they collect and label everything. And so I have different folders for different scenes. And that's when I like, I like this image. I don't like this image. Like, let's get rid of that, but let's keep these. Like, these are good. And then they make a layout and that's it. Past your standard static reference imagery. Something that I often find eye-catching when looking at treatments is the less humble GIF. Opinion on this is divided though, depending on who you're dealing with. Here's both sides of the argument, so you can think about it for yourself. We work in a visual medium and every idea is just an amalgamation of other ideas. And if you can literally go and take little clips of those ideas and put them together, you can go, basically, it's going to look like this, plus this, plus this. And I think GIFs are usually the best way to do that. Also, repetition is very powerful. So when you're trying to communicate an idea to somebody, if you can use GIFs and they, whilst you're talking, even on the phone, then they're looking at it and the same idea is repeating, 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 then of course, when you finish talking, they're like, yep, I totally understand what's going to happen if I let this guy do this commercial. I still don't have a very strong opinion on GIFs because I think images, for the most part, not always, for the most part, can resonate much better with the reader because GIFs kind of is distracting a lot of the times. You are looking at the text and then you are looking at the GIFs that's in the background. I find it jarring. The only place I think where it might be a good option to use a GIF is when you have a really complicated camera movement. Maybe like a good resolution halfway is that if you're going to include them, it's just an image reference page rather than having it alongside any of the information. How do you publish them? Well, that's the only thing that I don't like. Uh, Google Slides. Uh, Tom does it through InDesign. As a viewer watching this, trying to learn from this video, it's quite frustrating because there's not one right answer to the... Exactly, yeah. And, and it's the same with so many things. Well, you could do this, but you could also do that. Which one's the right one? You're not going to know. I've always struggled with the concept of spending time working hard on a treatment that you may very well not actually win the job of. I'd be annoyed and frustrated looking at it as just wasted, unpaid time rather than an opportunity to develop and improve my treatment writing, or even bank ideas for development on future projects. In the past, I've spent a couple of hours. I've also spent a couple of days. A couple of days ones tend to have either higher stakes or I'm just more engaged in the concept. But how long do you think you need to spend on a pitch winning treatment? A good treatment can take me two weeks. Go away, get some inspiration, come back, continue writing, so and so. I like to procrastinate a lot as well. I like to leave things for the last minute. Usually what I say to my agent is I need at least five days to put together a treatment because for me, it has to be at least this level of detail. And if it isn't this level of detail, I feel like I won't be comfortable with it. And so how will a client slash agency be comfortable hiring me to do the job? Sometimes in our line of work, you get a job which maybe isn't the most inspiring thing. So I have to sort of figure out my angle on this particular thing, whether it be gum or washing machine detergent, which makes me feel like it's cool and worth doing. And sometimes that takes me like a couple of days. So for me, I think if I feel like I can find an angle on the job that's going to make me be able to write about it in a way that feels like I'm genuinely excited and genuinely interested to do it, then I'll pitch on it and I will, yeah, probably spend extra time just getting it to where I want it for me personally. I would always try and go the extra mile if you can spare the time and it's not costing you too much to do. Okay, a brief's come in today, 11 o'clock on a Monday. Are you working on it until you need to at 11 o'clock at night? Or are you working until 5 o'clock, 6 o'clock? All right, I'm having family time now and I'm going to carry on working tomorrow. I put a lot of effort to like protect my evenings. For mornings, I have like the gym, stuff like that. 
Then I have the work day and typically like by 5 p.m. or 30 p.m. something like that. I am done. Like I know that any more work from this point onwards is going to be like detrimental and it's going to take away from the tomorrow's bulk of work. I try to keep the balance there. One very time consuming task that can be tricky to master for a lot of people is the design layout of a treatment. Over the past year, I've created a collection of different styles of beautiful drag and drop templates for fellow directors to easily customize for their own treatments. These time saving templates are now available to purchase in my online store. So I'll leave a link in the description for anyone looking to fast track to great looking treatments. Now that you've seen some of the work throughout this video of these awesome directors, what would you think that their win ratio is? Surely guys with work like this must be winning all the time. I think my win rate is maybe 25, 30% which I think it's pretty good. Like I lose a lot, but I also, I also get jobs. Two or three out of five. Every seventh or eighth treatment I win. This year, how many jobs have you had? Like three jobs? So far, considering that in May I, I took a pause, I've won four. Okay. I mean, that's pretty good. That's basically a job a month because January doesn't count. Yeah, but it was also my most busiest year with the treatment writings. Like I, I wrote the most this year. Like I haven't written nearly as much last year. But you won more last year. If you take the ratio. I think last year, on average, it was like every third or every fourth treatment, something like that. In the last year, yeah. regardless of whether you won it or not, how many days of or weeks of your time rather have you spent doing treatments roughly? By the look of my list, it's about 95 hours. 95 hours. Sorry, no, 95 days. 95 days? Yeah, because it's five days on every treatment. So... Last year, a third of your life was spent on treatments. Absolutely, yeah. And you think out of those, a third of them you won? Yeah, yeah. Maybe, maybe not a third, maybe 20%, 25. So straight away, this is a, a relevant talk to talk about, but was well, not relevant, but like when people hear day rates, yeah. it's like 10 grand a day is a load of money. Yeah, it's crazy. 10 grand it's a day, insane. plus the 95 days that he worked for free. Like, yeah. it's not 10 and grand a day. Also, Oh no, not at all. And then add on all the days that I do post for free and meetings for free and going to castings and like sitting in a, you know, in a casting room free and getting COVID and figuring out how I'm going to, you know, it's, uh, yeah. Our remuneration is, is ridiculous when we win. When we lose, our remuneration is nothing. I'm not trying to be discouraging by sharing this information with you. I just think it's important that people know that it's not always high paying portfolio worthy jobs all the time. In fact, most of the time, much like the craft of acting, there's a lot of risk and rejection that comes with being a director, like many of the other roles in the industry too. I've tried my best in this video to share with you all the things that I've learned in order to write a great treatment. But what is that one thing that you need to write a pitch winning treatment? You just never know. It's, uh, it, can, it can come down to so many different factors. But I think for me, I just have to feel comfortable with it. And as long as I feel comfortable that I've put in everything I possibly can and been as accurate and engaging uh, as I can be uh, in print, then, you know, I'm happy to lose a job because I'm like, well, I couldn't have done any better than, I, than I've done. I was like, you know, like that was absolutely the best I could have possibly done in terms of explaining a pitch. Um, and yeah, then I can walk away from it happy. Whereas I think if I do less, and I lose the job, I can never get it out of my head that I might have uh, won it if I'd have just done an, an extra page here or there. There's no real one true sense of how this whole thing works, this treatment log. No just one way to do it. Everyone's doing things slightly differently, but the more you know about how others approach things, then at least you can start to navigate it and find out what works best for you. Please give this video a like if you found any of this helpful. Leave a comment to let me know if there's any other topics that you'd like me to discuss with industry professionals. Watch this playlist for some great, rarely discussed industry topics and make sure to subscribe for more semi-helpful tips and interesting insider industry knowledge.